This is going to be a bit of a departure from the norm for me, but this video will be uh, a tutorial for how I paint my miniatures uh, at the request of some of my friends. Um, I want to preface this with I am in no way any kind of a professional at doing this. Uh, in fact, in the middle of this picture, you can see the very first miniature I ever painted, uh, which was not great. Uh, but on the right, you can see that I got better. Uh, so bear with me, and I hope you enjoy. So, for this video, we're going to be painting a 3D printed skeleton warrior uh, from the game Hero Quest, a 90s kind of a board game. Um, uh, yeah, this is a rough 3D printed uh, model, just came off the press. You can see it needs a lot of cleanup. Uh, areas like the head there, this leg here, uh, underneath the scythe. Uh, really rough. Um, I still haven't perfected my uh, 3D printing of my mini, so I get a little stringing, unfortunately. However, uh, with a good hobby knife, uh, X-Acto blade, be super careful. They are very sharp, and it's quite painful if you cut yourself. Uh, you can cut yourself very well with these. Uh, with a good knife like that, you can clean the model up really good. Then after basing, uh, it should look about like this. Uh, you can still see it's kind of rough. You can see the layer lines, especially uh, some of them up here on the scythe here. But it's got a lot of detail, and uh, it'll be real forgiving uh, when we put paint on it. And plus, uh, Skeleton's perfect for this because he can look kind of decayed and cruddy and gross. Uh, and that'll be okay. Um, I do apologize uh, if my camera goes in and out of focus. It's on autofocus right here because I can't constantly be doing it with my hands. Um, and this is the first time I've ever done a video like this where I'm going to be painting with the camera between me and the model. So this is uh, a little bit tricky. So I apologize if I get out of frame sometimes. I'll, I'll try to be conscious of that. So here's a, a, a primed model of it. Uh, and now here is what we hope to end up with. Now, it won't be quite this good. This is an actual uh, Hero Quest skeleton. Uh, and the reason he's going to look a little better is because he's injection molded. So he's super smooth with really fine details. I mean, you can see the teeth on that guy. Uh, it is, it's quite nice. Uh, so our, our model probably will come out a little rougher than that, but still totally doable for uh, desktop gaming. It'll look great. Uh, and here's the two side by side. So you can see where we're starting from and where we hope to be. Uh, we'll flip them to the back here. There you go. But you still get a lot of the fine details, like all the ribs uh, on it. And I believe you can still see uh, individual fingers. Uh, yeah, so I mean, he's going he's gonna to be plenty detailed, uh, I think. I can only get so close to the, to the camera, though, and then I lose focus. So i got to keep it at about this range. <laughs> and I can't get too far because it gets out of range. But this is where we're starting. This is where we hope to end up. So in a minute, I'll go over my kit and everything in it that's in it that I used to paint. And I have a lot of extras that I've accumulated over the years. But to start painting miniatures, this is literally all you need. You need white, black, red, yellow, and blue paints. You need a set of basic brushes. You can get them at Walmart for 5 to $10. These paints are about $0.50 cents a, a, a tube. You need a paper plate or something to use as a palette. Uh, a wet palette is better, and we'll talk about that later, but you can use a dry palette, and you can just use any paper plate for that. You need uh, some paper towels or something to wipe your, your paintbrushes off on, and you need a cup with some water in it uh, to wet your brushes. And then, of course, you need an object to paint, uh, whether that's a mini or a little uh, palette or something you're painting. depends on what you're painting. Uh, you, this entire set can be bought for... 10, less than $15, maybe less than $10. Now, the more colors you have, the better, uh, but this is all you actually need to paint minis. All right, just want to go over my painting kit real quick. I got this $30 tackle box from Walmart to hold everything. It works really well. Um, I have some toothbrushes and a pen light up here, uh, and I have some Ziploc baggies full of basing materials like sand and baking powder and uh, kitty litter, uh, which we'll explain later. Toothbrushes for cleaning off rough models. Uh, on this side, I have a couple of models waiting to be painted, uh, and I have uh, Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel. This stuff is fantastic for putting together models or repairing them. Um, in the top here, I have ruler 
Uh, I recommend like a one that's metal with a really good straight edge uh, for things. You can check and see if they're level. Uh, a couple little capsule containers I'll explain in a minute. Uh, brush cleaner. Uh, this stuff's fantastic. Uh, the Masters brush cleaner. You can get it on Amazon for like 10 bucks. It's great for cleaning your brushes, which you need to do frequently. Um, this is one of the most critical things to painting uh, minis, and it's it's just fantastic. Masterson's Stay Wet Handy Palette. I think it's like 15 to 20 bucks on Amazon. It's a wet palette. And what that consists of uh, is basically two layers. It is a uh, squishy uh, sponge. Uh, this real thin sponge layer and a water permeable paper layer uh, that actually can be reused and cleaned and it comes with a stack of the papers uh, and this keeps your paints wet which is really important if you're mixing colors because uh, if you let it dry out you know on a regular palette um, once it dries out it's going to be really hard to recreate that color combo exactly that tint I have some little cheap disposable palettes, and that's the first palette I ever painted with. I use it mainly for enamels now. I have different grits of sandpaper that I use to clean up models. Over here, I have my cheap brushes. Uh, this is kind of a generic set. It's about 8 bucks. Uh, there's some uh, broad, bigger tips and a couple of very fine tips. And my detail set. Uh, I primarily use the 10-0 brush, which, uh, as you can see, has a very uh, fine tip on it. And then finally, I have what I call a trash brush that I use for enamel. Uh, and you've got to clean this thing really uh, frequently. And every time you use it, otherwise the enamel just hardens. So there's the brushes. Over on this side, I keep my sharps, uh, X-Acto knives, hobby blades, tweezers, pliers, etc. I've got a jeweler's loop for looking at very close-up details on objects. Then over here, actually, probably be handy if I keep this open for a flat surface. The top's a little rounded. Down the bottom here, I have three trays. These will pull out trays. This is a really neat little container. Uh, I have uh, two brown paints, an assortment of craft glues and super glues, model cement, uh, teacher's tacky tape uh, putty, uh, which is useful, uh, and some little bitty detail brushes, little yellow bristle, plastic bristle brushes for applying super glue. Uh, and here, I have uh, gold, copper, and silver metallics, uh, as well as uh, kind of a lead uh, steel color. It's uh, by Citadel Paints called Lead Belcher. Uh, I've got black and white uh, and pavement, which is like a, a gray, dark gray black. Um, I'm going to come back to this one in just a second. Finally, at the bottom, I have my primaries, uh, red, yellow, blue, uh, but also green, even though you can make your own. Having a green to start from that's always going to be a consistent tone is really handy, and you can make it lighter, darker with black. Um, then I have my enamels, a uh, dull coat and a gloss coat. Gloss coat uh, only for shiny objects like mail and weapons and armor and stuff like that. Uh, and then paint thinner to clean your brush after you enamel, uh, which you got to have. So coming back to this, like I said, uh, and this container here is the key to painting, the cheap, <laughs> kind of cheap key to painting really great minis uh, that I found out online. And it is a uh, Citadel uh, wash called Agrax Earthshade. It's like 8 to $10 on Amazon. Uh, you can make your own washes, absolutely, uh, but this is this is worth every penny. It costs more than all the other paints combined because these little tubes of apple barrel paint are from Walmart, like 50 cents, you know, and the metallics are like a dollar. But this right here is fantastic. Uh, you wouldn't believe the difference it's going to make, and you'll see that later in the tutorial. I also have Nuln Oil, which is a black wash. Uh, Agrax Earthshade is a brown wash, a dark brown, but this is a black wash. I really only use this on metallics. Um, so uh, armor, weapons, or anything that's made out of metal. Uh, like I said, I have this uh, lead belcher, it's another Citadel paint, a couple of dollars, and it's kind of a dark steel color, which is great. And then finally, Cadian Flesh Tone. You can mix your own Flesh Tone colors, but it's very difficult to get right. They come out too pink usually for me. So this is a great starting base for doing uh, skin tones. Light skin tones, I should clarify. All right, and moving on, finally, at the very end, uh, I have oops, left the ruler out. That's okay. And this side, I have a 
a Citadel uh, character plant. Uh, it holds either a round base or square base minis, and it's pretty good. I like it. It's spring loaded. It's real ergonomic, easy to hold and use. But the way it clamps, it it kind of goes over the edge of the base a little bit, so it's not great for wanting to paint the bases. Um, but other than that, it's really good. But most of the time, for painting my minis uh, and for storing them as well, uh, I just keep them in medicine bottles. And we talked about that teacher tacky tape earlier. And what that's good for is holding them on. So just a small little bit of little squished bit of teacher's tacky tape. And when they're not being painted or used, you can keep them inside the container. keeps them away from dust while the paint dries and keeps them from getting touched or brushed on by other objects. And when you want to work on them, you just squish them down to the top here. And uh, it's a great little base to hold. And you can hit every angle and you can fully paint the base of it, and you don't care if you get paint on your medicine bottle because it's cheap. So that is the entirety of the kit. I said that was the entirety of the kit, but I lied. There's actually two more objects. Uh, I use a headlamp uh, if I'm in conditions where I need more light. Uh, just a little Home Depot one, it works really good with multiple brightnesses. And now that I'm older, uh, I use some reading glasses. I got uh, plus twos from Dollar Tree for a buck, uh, and they work great. Let me see really fine details. Uh, the only other thing besides all of this, uh, I have this work mat down here, uh, which is a rotary cutting mat, and I just use this to keep my work sur surfaces like my desk clean so I don't get paint on them. Yeah, other than that, uh, primer, uh, which I'll get into a little bit later. And that is everything. For priming, I like to use either Rust-Oleum or Krylon primer, um, black, gray, or white. Uh, white, only for light models, black for dark models, generally speaking, 90% of the time gray, because you can go either brighter or darker with your paints on top of it. Um, it's hard to paint light colors on top of black, and uh, some to some degree, vice versa. Uh, but yeah, generally just gray, um, and one can of this will get you a ton of minis, so that's not really a problem. It's cheap. Get it at the hardware store. Uh, and then, because I have weak uh, little baby fingers, uh, I got one of these little trigger guns, makes it a little to spray, and I uh, rigged mine up with a little light so I can kind of focus better on what I'm priming. All right, so uh, this is going to be a little shaky because I have to hold the camera uh, phone, unfortunately. But uh, basically, step one you're always going to want to do uh, is you want to base coat uh, your models. Uh, because if you try to paint them uh, with just uh, straight onto the plastic, a lot of times the, that paint will chip off over time. Uh, so I always recommend a base coat. So without further ado, you want to uh, stay back about a foot or so, uh, you know, it's probably uh, 10 to 12 inches from the, the model, and just do sweeping motions back and forth. This can's almost out, so it's a little sputtery, a little splattery. In fact, because my luck sucks, it may have just died on me. If I'm lucky, this will be the last model I'll get out of this can. Alright, so nobody wants to listen to me shake that back and forth forever, uh, but basically just make sure you're spraying it uh, evenly on all sides and maybe from the top. And for some models, you may actually need to spray it uh, up from the bottom. Uh, you don't want to uh, prime too close. Uh, if you get too close, you can spray globs, uh, you can make it too thick and it'll run. Uh, you want to avoid that. Alright, I think we got a good coat on there. I'm going to get in real close. Uh, I'm going to turn on an extra light here. Let's see if we can see. Yeah, he looks all right. Not perfect. Now we're going to let this dry uh, a couple hours. So for the second part of this tutorial, we'll begin doing the uh, first layers of paint for the Skeleton Warrior.